Ladies and gentlemen, this session is a tribute to Carl Levin. Please welcome Chairman Emeritus of Dickinson Wright PLLC and former mayor of the city of Detroit, Dennis Archer Sr. Secretary of State for the state of Michigan, Jocelyn Benson. President of Community Foundation for Southeast Michigan, Miriam Nolan. And to moderate the discussion, host of WJR News Talk, 760 AM, Paul W. Smith. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, one of the tough things about this job is that we're about to honor a guy who gave us 36 years of his life as a United States Senator, the longest serving Senator in the great state of Michigan. We have 20 minutes to do that. So we're not gonna cover everything by a long shot. Can I suggest that you see these magazines all over the place? And as Mayor Archer pointed out to me, inside there's a wonderful section or two or three on the Senator, and I hope you will pick that up. But we're going to whet your appetite with our guests who you just met and hear from them their life experiences as we honor Michigan's longest serving senator. First up, Miriam Nolan, who is the president of the Community Foundation for Southeast Michigan. And we know that, uh, Miriam, that Senator Levin was a big supporter of your foundation. Absolutely. Uh, my story goes back uh, 30 some years ago. I was somewhat new in town. And the Community Foundation was thinking about starting greenways, things like the Riverfront Conservancy, all over southeast Michigan. So I went to call on the senator in his office in Detroit. And you know, you're a little scared about doing that. And so I started telling him why this was great. It was going to be an economic development driver, great for health and so forth. And in the middle of a sentence, he stopped me. And I thought, oh no, what did I do wrong? Uh, he went up to the corner of his office and he pulled out some papers and he proceeded to show me that when he was in Detroit City Council, he had designed what their Detroit Riverfront ought to look like. And he was passionate. And so, so when I think of the Senator, I think about his passion, his commitment. And he also knew that things don't happen fast. Complex problems don't get solved fast. He was passionate about sticking with them. So fast forward to today, uh, he was extremely helpful throughout the early years of the Detroit Riverfront. He also made sure that some of the public dollars were flowing into Michigan. Uh, and when he came back uh, to Michigan, uh, he joined the board of the Riverfront Conservancy because he was still committed to making that happen. And for me, the first thing I think about is trust, passion, commitment, and persistence. Wonderfully put. Please. There's always time for applause. <laughs> Next up, our Secretary of State, the great state of Michigan, who had quite a life before she became our Secretary of State. And Jocelyn Benson has been quoted as saying, my best days as dean at Wayne State University Law School were when I got to work with and learn from Senator Carl Levin. So let's pick it up there. Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't meet him through politics. I met him through academia. We co-taught a class together on legislation. Um, but my first real conversation with him wasn't uh, in any political event. It was in my office as dean at Wayne State Law School. And uh, he shared with me, uh, at that point, he had just retired, and he said the best, the thing that excited him most at that moment was that he had a lifetime caris carol or carousel at the Library of Congress. And he said, just think about it. Any book I want in the whole world, I just tell them I want to read it, and they bring it to me, and I get to read it. And it just really captured to me his love of learning, his passion for knowledge and truth and facts and, uh, and then as a co-professor, as we taught a class together, you saw in every day he gave he, he, every moment his best. He over-prepared. He uh, thought of every question and answered every question. And it was such a privilege to be able to work alongside of him in that role, in that capacity, um, because he pushed us all as leaders to be better, uh, to do better. 
and uh, in, even in the academic role, he pushed me every day to, um, to read more, to study more, to prepare more, to always think more how we could do even better as leaders, as professors, wherever we were, and uh, that's some things, one of the things uh, that uh, I carried with me and, and, and still do. He became not just a mentor, but a real paternal figure for me. I was very close with him throughout the past five or six years. And it's still uh, his loss, the emptiness of it is still very real and fresh for all of us who, uh, who had the honor to work with him closely. Very good. Good memories that none of us could have, never working with him like that. However, finally, we turn to Mayor Dennis Archer. And he has had a lot of experiences uh, as a colleague and uh, as a very dear friend with Senator Carl Levin. And I'm looking forward to you telling us a few stories. I think everybody remembers that Carl was a member of the Detroit City Council. And he was a great councilman who cared deeply about the entire city of Detroit and its surroundings. I was sitting in my office one day and he called and he said, I'd like to come by and see you. It was in my law office. I was with uh, Sharfus and them at the time. And he came by and he said, I really enjoy the work that I do as president Detroit City Council. But Dennis, there's a calling that I have that I would like very much to become a member of the United States Congress and run for senator. And we talked and I listened. And when he won, he did everything that he promised that he would do and continue to do so. Tip O'Neill is very famous for his comment of having said that all politics are local. And by and large, that's correct. But Carl Levin took it a step above. Because of his belief in civility and how he respected people and the issues of the state of Michigan, he bent over backwards to make sure that everyone understood his position and he listened to others. Mm -hmm. And he, like Ted Kennedy and uh, Orrin Hatch, who worked together on issues on education, he was able to, Carl Levin was able to work with everybody on all the issues. And he served us exceedingly well. Jocelyn Benson, before she became Secretary of State, also was a very prominent role player in the legacy that he left at Wayne State University, which you should mention a little bit. Um, and Jean Dreiker called after Carl had resigned and said, will you come and be a trustee? And I said, absolutely. And I served for about five years. And it was, you always learn from Carl Levin. You learn how he treats people. And it encouraged all of us to be respectful of each other. But tell them about. Yeah, in, in, uh, in reflecting on that, uh, preserving his legacy so that we could have more Carl Levins as leaders in our state in every sector was really important to me and to others like Eugene Dreiker, his close friend, and, um, and like another mentor of mine here, Mayor Archer. And so we all came together and created the Levin Center at Wayne Law uh, that was really designed at uh, training not just another generation of, of leaders who prioritize civility and, and hard work and, and, um, and bringing people together, but also the importance of oversight the importance of holding people accountable, the importance of holding powerful entities accountable, and the importance of transparency. And so the Levin Center is designed to training the next uh, generation of congressional staff and Senate staff and Senate and congressional leaders to uh, exhibit the same kind of thoughtful bipartisan oversight that he really and Senator Levin really exemplified throughout his career in the Senate. Uh, and it's been a tremendous success. So in the past several years, we've trained hundreds of staff and members of Congress, not and, and also state legislators and um, uh, even legislative leaders in other countries. And so it's another way to really make his legacy real, make it beyond uh, his, his memoirs, which I encourage you all to read, uh, but to really uh, in, instill his spirit in the next generation of leaders, not just in our state or country, but also across, and over the, across the globe as well. Paul W., you had a unique position since coming to the city of Detroit and taking over a position that many felt that couldn't be handled by anybody else with J.P. McCarthy. But you've done that and you've succeeded and excelled. And in the morning, you talk to a lot of different people and you see a lot of different folks and you're out 
they're trying to help our community. Like, you talked to Carl Levin. What was your impression? Well, I thought he was, I thought he was fabulous. And I may be the, I'm, I don't know uh, uh, Miriam's politics. I think I know the politics of you two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I may be the only person on stage who might have had disagreements mm -hmm. with Senator Carl Levin. But I'm here to tell you that he knew how to disagree without being disagreeable. I never felt he didn't respect me. I know he never felt I didn't respect him. And we might have been at loggerheads on issues. Mm. We need more of that in politics today. We don't have it at all. It's, you know, it, it, that's... I remember being in Washington uh, for a number of visits at the White House for both parties, whoever was president at the time. And I remember going over to a place called Old Ebbets Grill, yep. which has been there seemingly forever. And you would see a Republican and a Democrat who had a knockdown drag out earlier, but they were having a cocktail together. If that's done today, both of them are looked at as disloyal. Hmm. And that's a shame. That's really a shame, because without free and easy conversation, just disagreeing with each other gets us nowhere, just disagreeing with each other. These things need to be worked out. Frankly, it's really also the value of being up here again. And I've been here 26 years, I think, almost in a row, save last year, of bringing people together in a circumstance and situation where they can have conversations where they can have unguarded mm -hmm. conversations and learn a lot. And you were a big part of that along the way and coming up with a report card and not just talking about what we should do and what we accomplished. And then I, I kind of noticed that we'd come back the next year and we were going to accomplish it again. And I thought, wait a minute, I thought we solved mass transportation <laughs> last year. I even had a hat that said we did, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't the case. And and the mayor came up with a good idea of having like a report card, which you guys have to this day. But back to Carl Levin. He was just a wonderfully nice, brilliant man. I truly respected him. And when he had a statement or a belief or a stand that I didn't have, when he told me his statement, stand, or belief, I really listened. Hmm. And I'm not ashamed to say he changed my mind on a couple of issues. I'm not so sure I ever changed his mind. But I, 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 I do believe, and you had a wonderful opportunity to work with him at your law school that had to be very special. Yeah, you know, it's interesting as you're talking, I was reflecting on how one of the, you know, I would go to him for advice all the time. And one of the most interesting things was that he never often had an answer. That he sort of in, inherent in his advising or decision making was kind of this inherent recognition of the complexities of problems and that there aren't easy answers and he always acknowledged that he never even if I was saying, asking him what should I do about this or that he would weigh the different sides and encourage me to come to my but he would always kind of acknowledge that there weren't easy answers and that listening to each other and and he, and he would live these values li, li, himself listening to others and coming up with his own perspectives but ag again acknowledging the complexities of, of decisions, of problems, of problem solving, of leadership. And that is a real humility and an honesty in leadership that we don't see often today. But, the, the, but he also had time for everyone. Mm. He, if, you, if you tried to get to him, you could. And I always respected that. You know, I was not in public office, but we had ideas. He never, he always told the truth. You knew what he believed. And if he said he was going to do something or support it, he did. But being accessible, I found really unusual in a person of his standing and what he was, he was so busy. But I hold that very dear. You started to say. A couple of things. First, uh, I want to remind everybody, and you will know what I mean, it's, I tell you, he is the one person that you could always depend upon to introduce his wife wherever he was, because she was a true partner with him. They had beautiful children. They were all smart, very talented. But he always introduced his wife as being a part of who he was and what he was about. And I think that, that shows a measure. 
So it does. A large measure of a person. Says a lot about him. The other thing I will say is that back during the time since you reminded me of Jocelyn, that we might be of same size on issues, I got a telephone call from uh, President Bill Clinton. And he no, said, he used to call me all the time, too. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Mr. Mayor or Dennis, Carl Levin is thinking about retiring. Would you please talk to him and ask him to run one more time? And I invited he and his wife over to the Manugian Mansion, and Trudy and I met with him. And I shared with him a call that I got from President Bill Clinton and the fact that, from his point of view, the country needed his wisdom, his knowledge of having been chairman of the committees, and how he worked with people to be able to help pull our country together. That's pretty tall cotton when you can get sure somebody is. like that to sure call somebody and say, would you talk to him and see if. And fortunately for us, he did serve. And he just did an outstanding job until he felt that it was time. Mm -hmm. And um, he's always given back. As Barry will tell you, if you do anything in, for the foundation because of your work, because of what you do with that foundation and how you give back to the community, he wanted to be a part of that. Yeah. And you could always count on him to step up. But that's like you, Paul. It's, you know, it's interesting. I was, I, I, in my one of my last lunches with him, uh, I was I was struggling with a particular issue, but in, and really it was an issue that um, caused people, allies of mine, people in my own party, to not be happy with me. And so I had lunch with with Senator Levin, who I never ever could bring myself I never, never bring himself myself to call him anything but Senator Levin, uh, despite his on on near constant call me Carl, call me Carl. So anyway, I had, I had lunch with Senator Levin, and I, I talked to him about it, and he, um, he, he, it sort of gets to his quiet strength. He um, really talked about the challenges oftentimes of being uh, solitaire in, in speaking up for integrity and speaking up for the truth and challenging even those, your supporters, your own party, and those sorts of things. But he lived that life of courageous, humble, uh, independence as well, as we talk about sort of different sides of issues. I mean, he was a very independent thinker, uh, and he encouraged other leaders as well, regardless of what party you could be affiliated with, uh, to do the right thing, to lead with integrity, to understand that a lot of times that's tough, and it's isolating, and it's lonely, but it's the right thing to do. And so he could always count on him to give me that affirmation, and that's one of the things I think a lot of us who would go to him for that kind of support are really going to miss. And on his board of trustees, we had several United States senators who happened mm -hmm. to be Republicans mm -hmm. because they believed in the work that Carl did and <clears throat> they were very supportive of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he knew that not one party had all the answers or not one perspective had all the ideas and, uh, and I think that came through in the way he not only made decisions but was able to bring people together and, and reach compromise and solutions. You know, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm looking at you and I'm looking at the big screen and we have seen a number of photographs mm. of Senator Carl Levin. And it reminds me of what a sweet, sweet man he was. A brilliant man, excellent at everything that he did, cared about everyone that spoke to him. Not once ever was he big-timing it, or <laughs> don't, don't you know who I am? Or in any way, shape, or form playing the U.S. Senator card. For 36 years, he held his dignity and was dignified with all of us. And I think that what we certainly know is we all will miss him. Whether we agreed with him politically or not, we knew he was doing what he felt was best for Michigan and the United States of America. Now, as any, I, you couldn't have ever seen him. I've never seen him lose his temper. I've seen him be passionate. I've seen him be angry about wrongs that needed to be righted. I never saw him lose his temper and be angry. Can you remember anything, no. Madam Secretary? No, I just remember his staff, who I also worked with. It's another remarkable thing. His staff was with him for three, three decades, and, uh, and they said one time he would say, they could tell when he would be disappointed 
in something that didn't go well, but he would never raise a voice. He would never express anger to his team or his staff, which I think, you know, the people who know him best, I think, would all say the same. Very effective tool. My parents used yeah. it on me. Not being angry, <laughs> not being angry, but being disappointed <laughs> in me. That was the worst. Anger, you get over. You take the final word. We have 40 seconds. I'd just like to remind everybody, as our children are going back to school and as our sons and daughters who are going back to school or college, etc., if there's someone that you would like to remind them that perhaps they might want to be in their lives, mm. it's Carl Levin. We teach in school how to respect each other, um, stay in line, don't take cut, whatever it is. Carl Levin never took cuts. He was always a great person. And that's somebody that I think we could encourage our own children to be just like. Mayor Shout Dennis Archer, Levin. thank you so much. Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson. And Miriam Nolan, President Community Foundation. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you all. Okay.